That's a great question, and actually my mom pushed me to be an engineer, or I should say introduced me to engineering, and I went to a Society of Women Engineers event with my mother when I was a teenager, real, pretty young teenager actually, and I fell in love with the mechanical engineer, the female mechanical engineer that was there speaking. And so from that day forward, I was a mechanical engineer. That's what I studied at uh, university, and my first job out of my mechanical engineering degree was with Chrysler Motors in the Chrysler Institute of Engineering. And I think actually what made me uh, qualified for that first role, it was, it was a leadership training program, and so it was both engineering and leadership. And I think I combined my engineering background, my econ economics undergrad, and my experience as a cheerleader in high school. And you put econ, engineering, and rah-rah together, and I think you get a decent engineering leader. Sure, so after Chrysler, I uh, actually left to get an advanced degree, and I uh, got a master's in applied math at Northwestern University. And then I moved into the aerospace industry. I was uh, leaving my degree and I ran into an undergraduate professor as I was leaving uh, my graduate program. And he said, why don't you apply to Aerospace Corporation? And I was in the Nor at Northwestern, which is in Evanston, the Chicago area, Chicago, Illinois. And this was a move out to Los Angeles and I thought that sounded really fun. And so I interviewed, uh, applied and interviewed at Aerospace and I was there for a decade. In September of 1988, and I was there for 10 years. So I, or excuse me, October. It was Halloween. I flew in on my broom on October 31st, 1988, and I left in October of 98. After aerospace, I worked for a little company called Microcosm, and then I met Elon in 2002, and I joined his team as quickly as I could. So my first experience managing people was at Microcosm. I had a small team and um, we were suffering kind of a downturn in business at that time and one of my first experiences was having to lay off an employee and that was extremely difficult. Uh, but it was a great learning experience as a young manager. Uh, so I wouldn't call that a highlight, but it was, uh, it was an interesting and important lesson for me to learn. Um, and what that motivated me to do is to make sure I didn't have to do that going forward. And so uh, I really kicked into high gear my business development and we got the organization in a very comfortable place financially so I didn't have to do that again. Um, then I moved to SpaceX and have uh, managed small teams now through pretty large teams, 6,500 employees and roughly a thousand or so contractors. So there's a bunch of folks that, uh, that work for me, but I always say I work for them. And it's my job to clear their paths to make sure that they can do their best work. So if a leader is there to make sure that their teammates, team members can do their best work, obviously it's incredibly important to be a great listener. You have to listen hard to people and what their concerns are so that you can clear their paths. Uh, you have to be motivational, right? Even when times are rough, uh, it's really important to put a positive, not a fake, but a positive uh, perspective, give people a positive perspective and a reason to keep moving. And, uh, and so I think that's incredibly important as well. So listen hard, be motivational, um, and frankly, you have to work hard. You have to serve as a great example. Well, I think it's important to have technical background, even if you're not great at math. I think an engineering degree is a very important degree to have. It's a problem solving, it's a logical way of thinking. So even if you don't have to be great in math, you know, but you have to be, have a willingness to learn and a willingness to think about things in maybe a different way. So I love engineering degrees. I always recommend that to anyone who's struggling with what should they study. I always say engineering or physics. Um, or at science or math as well. As a matter of fact, my degree, my master's degree is in applied mathematics, which is basically engineering analysis or mathematics. So I think that's a great degree as well. Um, but I also recommend that students get hands-on experience in the work that they are passionate about. 
um, whether it's building a CubeSat or building a board or if you're software writing an app. But I think it's really important to try to do the things that you think you want to do to make sure you do want to do it. In addition, it helps you motivate you to take the classes that will help you be better in that particular field. SpaceX is uh, an incredibly incredible place to work. I work with extraordinary employees. As a matter of fact, that's the best part of my job is working with such great folks. Um, but it is uh, an intense place to work. Uh, we need because of the extraordinary things that we need to do. We need every employee to be at their best. And I think one of the best ways to see whether an employee would work well uh, at this at a company like SpaceX is to see whether they've had success in their career in the past. It doesn't have to be success building the fastest car, but have they felt successful and are they motivated towards success? And uh, I think that's just an incredible or an important feature uh, when we're hiring folks to try to suss out during interviews. I think joining teams, being part of a team, is the first step, I think, in leading a team. Look at team dynamics, what is successful, how can the team come to uh, move forward and make success, and then you start emulating those within your team that are helping to move that team forward, um, exhibit those skills, um, and then make your teams bigger and bigger, join bigger and bigger teams, and volunteer. I think it's really important to volunteer for jobs that you wouldn't necessarily think are all that important, but for instance, if you're taking notes, you're the one with all the, you've got the treasure, right? You know who's supposed to do what, you know what promises were made, and I think that's a nice piece of information to have when you're leading a team. There's been three extraordinary moments at SpaceX. The first was in May 2012 when the Dragon spaceship uh, birth with the International Space Station. We were kind of hanging by a thread, hoping we would get there. And the arm finally reached out and grabbed Dragon and plugged her in. So that was an extraordinary day. You know, we had been told from the beginning we'd never get to orbit with little Falcon 1. We did that. We would never get to orbit with Falcon 9. And we did that. And then we would never get to the International Space Station. And so that was really an incredible moment. So not only a Falcon 9 success, but a Dragon success. So it was a great moment for the team. Second was in December of 2015 when we landed the first orbital class booster after an extraordinary mission taking the 11 ORCOM satellites onto orbit. That was an amazing day. I had too much champagne that night, regret it a little bit the day after, but that was an incredible moment. And then the third was the Falcon Heavy launch. It was it felt the same, like all, all three of those days were extraordinary at SpaceX. The teams were crying and hugging and kissing and jumping up and down and it was an amazing day. 